My name is Hannah, and this is my year of less stuff. Hey y'all, so I am filming this video on Wednesday in the late afternoon. I don't have a video yet for tomorrow, Thursday, and I'm really trying to get a video up on every day if it's possible for me. And it might not be possible for me going forward, but I do have this time right now, and so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I am having a little bit of a low morale day. I feel like morale is a little bit low for me today particularly. Joe was joking that we've been like taking turns being the one who's really stressed out and the one who's like supporting the other one. And I feel like up until now, Joe has been kind of stressed and I've been like cheering him on and bucking him up. And then today we kind of switched roles and I became the one who needed a little bit of cheering up. Luckily for me, I have Joe here and he's really great at that. For some reason, because of the way his brain works, he, <laughs> speak of the devil, Joe, <laughs> Joe just came in. He's gonna be here, I think, while I'm filming parts of this video. He might drift in and out. But for some reason, because of the way his brain works, he was saying that one of us is the grape and one of us is the wrath. And if you are the person who's providing support, you're the grape. And if you're the person who's stressed out, you're the wrath. Can you, do, you have anything, do you have anything to say for yourself about that? You're the grape. I'm the grape. I I'm, thought we were trading off. Yeah, but I'm the wrath today. You're, I need you to be the grape for like three more hours. Okay. So I think it's because morale is a bit low that I coun't think of anything else to do except for to swatch all of my bullet lipsticks on my face. It's not like it's something I've particularly wanted to do before. It's not like a video that I've been planning. It just seems like something I can do right now, and also something that will maybe provide some like calm, even keel, engaging, and yet somewhat superficial, like a pleasantly superficial viewing experience. So I pulled all of my bullet lipsticks. I didn't think I would have it in me to lip swatch all of my lipsticks, and maybe I'll put the other non-bullet style lipsticks in a different video. If you guys enjoy this one, maybe I'll just go ahead and finish it off with the rest of my lipstick collection. I have 16 bullet lipsticks, and I've actually never, I don't think, it, to my memory, done like a lip swatch video. I've never swatched, at least I know that I don't think I've ever swatched 16 lipsticks one after another, taking them off, putting another one on, taking it off, putting another one on. So I feel like 16 is like maybe doable, and maybe I'll regret it by the end, but I'm going to try. I'm gonna swatch each one and then just like talk about the formula and react to me having put it on my own face. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Something I did not do was to clean up or tidy up my vanity. I usually do that. If it's a mess when I'm sitting down to film, I usually tidy it up. It's usually pretty tidy. It's it's about it's this way about mm, like a quarter of the time, and it just happened to be this way today, and I just I just left it. I'm also in my eyes wearing the same eye look that I demoed in the Get Ready with Me that went up on the day that I'm filming. So yesterday for you guys, Wednesday. It isn't the same day. This isn't the exact makeup that I put on when I got ready on that day, but it is pretty much the same look. I actually layered some of the Rowan shadows with the Tom Ford one for this look, but it, it's the same idea. It's the same in almost every way. But I think some of my mascara has worn off today, like over the course of the day. I'm gonna go ahead and just reapply a little bit more before we start the lip swatching. Lip swatching sounds like it's something that middle schoolers wanna do during parties. <laughs> If you guys want to know more about Joe, you should follow me on Twitter because my Twitter account is called Life with Joe, and all I ever tweet are things that Joe says. I'm going to start with the softest colors and maybe the sheerest formulas. I'm not necessarily going in exact order from lightest to darkest, but I'm starting with the five that I think will be the easiest to remove and the least likely to leave some sort of stain. I'm actually gonna start with this one because it's kind of like a mm, slightly glossy formula. It'll maybe be the easiest to remove of all of them. It's the L'Oreal Color Riche Shine in 902 Dazzling Doe. Okay, I'm already glad I'm doing this because I haven't worn this in such a long time. And just applying it is reminding me of the things about the formula that I like, the reason that it's made it through so many declutters, and I just am not remembering that when I'm beholding my lipsticks and deciding which one to wear. 
I'm remembering it now as I apply it. It manages to somehow be both sheer and milky, but not milky in that white pigmented way that ends up looking kind of like, uh, like a white cast, honestly, on my lips because my lips are rather pigmented just in and of themselves. There's something about it. It, it looks sheer, it looks sheeny, but it holds its color and it pretty much obscures my natural lip color from shining through, even though my natural lip color is something that kind of battles with this because it's so cool toned. It also feels incredibly nourishing. It's like both edgy and easy to wear, which I think is a pretty rare combination. And just trying it on makes me wanna wear it more often in the coming days. I'm gonna zoom in. I feel like this is the kind of video for which we should be a bit more zoomed in. Okay, I feel like that's much better. You can really see how it looks. So that is L'Oreal Dazzling Dough. Okay, next up we have Glossier's Generation G Lipstick in Leo. I really, really like this lipstick. I actually reach for it a lot. It's a neutral that I tend to go for. I'm realizing more and more that, especially if I have an eye look on, I want my lips to look natural in texture or to have a gloss. I feel like a gloss looks natural in its own way most of the time. What I really like about this is it has colored my lips, but the surface of them, the actual texture of them, like my actual lip skin, really looks like itself. Like it just looks the same, it just looks darker. It looks like my lips are naturally this color, even if you get all the way up way, way, way close and look. And that's really special to me. I really like that because I like the combination of a very, very natural, sort of true to life skin looking face and something rather editorial like color. I feel like it's the least makeup-y lipstick I've ever tried. This is another lipstick that's very easy to wear and very natural looking. It's probably the second most natural looking lipstick that I've ever tried. It's the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color and this one is in the color Bare. In terms of color, it's actually probably more natural on me even than the Leo. It really, really looks like a My Lips But Better and the texture of it, the almost chapsticky texture and the nourishing feel of it just add to that impression, both as the person wearing it and I think as the person seeing the way that it looks on someone else. This smells like Band-Aids to me. And I think I've heard it referred to as kind of like a more traditional smelling lipstick or like an old fashioned smelling lipstick. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't smell sort of repulsively like Band-Aids, but it's just like the only smell reference that I have in my smell mind palace to be able to like tell you what it kind of smells like. It smells very, very faintly of something like Band-Aids is what I should say. It's not like, whoa, Band-Aids. It's just, I just, I just think it smells like Band-Aids. But it's faint enough that I like, I don't necessarily think about Band-Aids every time I put it on. I only think about them when I'm trying to describe the smell to someone. Overall, it's relatively inoffensive. This is one of my favorite, my like all time favorite lipstick formulas. Okay, I'm getting into my matte cream lipsticks, like cream in terms of the formula and matte in terms of the finish. My matte cream bullet lipsticks in the lighter colors. So we're moving out of the like, more translucent or glossy bullet lips and into the matte lips for the lighter end of the color spectrum. This is um, Maybelline Beige Babe, kind of an iconic lipstick in my personal makeup history. I'm not sure how accurate the filming will be here. Like I'm not sure how high def my lips will be. At close range, they don't look that great with this lipstick on right now because I'm dealing with a little bit of dry skin just overall. But the color, it is like the ideal Twiggy nude for me, which was what I was setting out to buy when I bought this lipstick. The formula is so impressive. It feels creamy, it feels relatively nourishing, and it looks incredibly matte, as you can see. This is another one that I bought for a specific purpose to fill this hole in my lipstick collection way back at the beginning of my budget year, right after my no buy year ended. And I did wear it a lot and I just haven't been wearing it that much recently. I think this statement of a lip for me just isn't what I've been into lately. I still do find this really useful though for mixing with other lip colors to lighten them up a bit and to make them kind of more nude on me. Because even lip colors that are marketed as nude often look either quite pink or quite deep on me. It doesn't look as crazy or as like makeup-y as I've sort of been remembering it. This is why this might be a good idea. I actually, I'm kind of getting to the point after just a few lipsticks where I recommend this. I recommend this 
as a phase of makeup playtime, just trying on all of your lipsticks one after another. Yeah, my memory of the way this looks on me is definitely different from how it really does look. All right, here we have Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn, a similarly matte lipstick, a similarly light color, but not quite as light as Beige Babe. This is more of a my lips but better on me. So I know from comparing them that this has more brown in it than Bobbi Brown Bear, the lipstick I had on just a couple ago. And this is another one that I've been not reaching for because I imagine it looking very lipsticky, very thick and matte on me. And in reality, during this exercise, I'm remembering that it's actually a lipstick that's really easy for me to wear, especially if I just have kind of a wash of sheeny color all over my eyes rather than a complex or a smoky eye look. And my cheek look is pretty neutral as it is today, just a little bit of shine and just a little color that's so light at this point in the day that it's probably not even picking up on camera. With a look like this, this lipstick just looks like it kind of completes it. It doesn't look overdone and I've been remembering it as something that can possibly make me look a little bit overdone because of its matte texture. I've really been giving matte lippies a bad rap in my mind and this is showing me that I needn't be doing that. Okay, so those are all of the lighter or sort of semi-sheer bullet lipsticks that I have. I'm moving into the other 11, <laughs> the rest of them. Only a couple of them are red and only a couple of them are like dark and pigmented enough that I think that they will be hard to remove. So I'm going to go through all of the rest of them before I get to those and they're going to be a bit out of order just in terms of like color and texture and all of that stuff. I'm just I'm just going to go through one by one. So let's start with Maybelline Raw Chocolate. Mm, I love this lipstick so much. This is just reminding me of my fondness for it. I mean, I hadn't forgotten. This is my favorite lipstick of all time, and I remembered that. But again, what I'm remembering is that the formula, it, it can be sheared out. It can be worn very, very naturally. It's almost as if it can be like blotted down so that it doesn't just feel and wear like the Glossier Generation G, but it also kind of looks like it. It looks kind of like that thin stain, that thin sort of creamy stain over the lips. But I can get it to a point where the texture of my lips actually looks pretty natural, even underneath the color of this lipstick. And I love that. It's one of the things I love about it. But the thing that I love the most is the color. All right, next up, another Maybelline lipstick. This is Gone Grage. So that's a pretty thick application of this lipstick for me and it makes it look pretty vampy on me because I'm so pale it almost looks like I'm wearing a black lipstick and the picture is just a little bit washed out. But I find that the undertones in this lipstick are so well balanced that it doesn't have to look like that especially if I blot it down. So I wanted to show it to you first in all its glory, but here's how it looks when it's a bit blotted down. It almost looks like I'm kind of cold, like it has a little bit of that purple in it, but I do feel like there's something sensual about that. It's like a bitten or swollen and chilled lip, like a wind whipped lip. I feel like there's enough flesh tone in here. There's enough brown, there's enough sort of warmth in there to balance out that cool tone enough so that it doesn't look costumey. It just looks kind of grungy, and cool. I always feel very chic when I'm wearing this lip and this is just again like all of it reminding me that I want to reach for this more. I want to be brave enough to wear more lipstick more often even lipsticks like this. I feel like this is something I can really get away with on a daily basis. Like I feel like it looks totally natural and totally appropriate just even with this like washed black t-shirt, earrings, slightly glossy bronzy eye. Perfect. And again, the formula of these Maybelline mattes, especially Gone Grage and Raw Chocolate, even more than Beige Babe, they are so easy to wear. They're, they really, I feel like especially blotted, they really do remind me of the Glossier Generation G, but actually a bit more long wearing even and a bit more pigmented than the Glossier lipsticks. Let's look at this Erin's Faces lipstick. It is the Erin's Faces Mineral Lipstick and it's in the color Nancy. This is one of my faves. Okay, the camera stopped recording while I was applying that, and I'm not sure how much of the application process it got, but 
It was the first one of the lipsticks I've put on today where I had to take a Q-tip and use it to soften the edges because it's so pigmented and it's so creamy and because it's like an orangey red. It's one of those lipsticks that has so much pig pigment, so much rich pigment that it has the potential to kind of like get out of hand if I'm, if I'm not a little more careful. With most of the ones that I've tried on so far, they've been like more nudes on me, more brown nudes, and I've been able to kind of just slap them on and go, or more sheer formulas. This one is one that I definitely want to get a good precise application. But the feel of it is really, really nourishing. Like it feels like I just put on a lip treatment, <laughs> like a mask. A lip mask that's how good it feels I also love the color of this it's like a spice leaning or an orange leaning red but it's got enough like reddish pink in it to balance it out so that it's not like a straight tangerine which can be harder to wear than a color like this it's almost like a cross between a, an orange or a tangerine and a coral it's like a soft orangey coral okay let's swatch Charlotte Tilbury Bond Girl this is a lipstick that I have been wearing a lot lately I've just, I think what's, what happened was I started wearing it in videos and then every time I was editing the footage of myself when I had this lipstick on, I was like, that lipstick looks so good. It just, it really looks sensual. And then I started wearing it even more as a result of having appreciated how it looked in the footage. So that's how it looks pretty much at full opacity but I almost always blot a lipstick down and I always blot this one down. I just wanted to show you what it would look like if I applied it without blotting. But there it is, blotted down and smudged out around the edges, which is how I have been wearing it in videos. This formula is uh, you know, really quite thin and matte. It's kind of like a thin layer of a chapsticky paint and it has that watery aspect to the color. Obviously the formula is not watery. It's like a matte bullet lipstick. So it feels, if anything, sort of soft and slippy and powdery going on. But the color has that slightly watery, almost waxy aspect. So it's easier to slap on. It's not like if a little bit got out of my lip line, it would, it would look messed up. It's easy to soften. It's easy to, to reapply without a mirror. And I just think that the color is, is so mm, just, there's just something swollen about it. This is another Bobbi Brown crushed lip color. It is in the shade Telluride. So I applied those two lip colors back to back on purpose. They are very similar to, to each other. They're probably the closest in color to each other of any two lipsticks in my entire bullet lipstick collection. I like having them both because I conceive of them very differently. And also Bond Girl is very matte in the way that it looks. Its finish is very matte. And Telluride is more of a satin finish, more of a skin-like finish. They feel very different on the lips. And um, that is all true, but I think more importantly is the, the first thing that I said, that I just conceive of them differently. I conceive of this almost as a pigmented chapstick. I conceive of it as having a bit more brown in it, which I do think it does. I think that that's the only real difference in their undertones. And I conceive of it as being a little bit easier to wear. I conceive of Bond Girl as being like really special and luxurious. Of course, Bobbi Brown is also a luxury brand, but I just, this is just how I conceive of it. And I conceive of it as having that, yeah, like that sort of bitten, swollen, matte quality, almost like my lips got rubbed raw. I know they look almost the same. They probably look exactly the same to you guys like watching on the other side of the screen, but to me they are different and I do wear both of them pretty regularly. This one might look a little bit darker. I'm maybe more inclined to wear this at full opacity than I am to wear Bond Girl at full opacity. Let's do a light and somewhat mild red that I really like. This is Givenchy's Mandarin Bolero. Maybe it's just the lighting. I feel like I'm actually getting some sunlight. The setting sun is reflecting off of our microwave, like the, the silver edging of our microwave and reflecting right onto the bottom half of my face. You can probably, can you see that right there? Can you see that like edge of light going up and down? That's because the bottom half of my face is getting this like weird spot of reflected sunlight. It's fine. 
I feel like it might be that light or it might just be the comparison to the other lipsticks, but this is looking very fluorescent to me right now. It's looking quite, quite bright. Hey Casey, can you put down that shade? It's like reflecting off of the cabinets into my face. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's reflecting off the microwave. That did it. Thank you. Okay, Joe pulled down the shades. So hopefully this is a little bit more true to color now. This is a great soft red. This is the kind of lipstick that I would recommend to like a personal friend who doesn't wear a lot of makeup. If she came to me and she asked for a recommendation because she wanted like one perfect summer lipstick to just wear all summer and wear down to an absolute nub and she wanted it to be luxurious and she wanted it to be relatively easy to wear but also stylish like a stylish statement red but not too vampy not too deep something that would work for the daytime and the nighttime basically a high-end soft red in a satin formula i feel like mandarin bolero is it it's to me iconic and i'm really grateful to have it I love wearing it. Okay, there's just five left and we're going strong. I feel like this is something I can do. I feel like lip swatching, at least bullet lips. It would be different maybe if they were liquid lipsticks, but I feel like this is something that I can do. Let's swatch Charlotte Tilbury's Birkin Brown. This is a lipstick that is hard for me to wear. It is a bit prone to patchiness on me. I don't know if it's specifically the formula and the color or if it's like something to do with my lips or my coloring or something. I think it might be that to wear it at full opacity it makes it look very very vampy and that's not really what I'm interested in. I'm interested in a slightly lighter application like this or even even like that. Even wearing it kind of like a stain. You can really see my natural lip color coming through it and yet it's got that like chocolatey depth to it. This is how I usually like to wear it, and I think that with this slightly silicone-y matte formula from Charlotte Tilbury, it's harder to get that stain-like quality. It's almost like it lends itself more to full opacity. But with a lipstick this dark, I just can't really hack it. Or, or I should say it's not the look that I'm usually going for. But once I get it applied evenly with that stain-like finish, I just love it. <laughs> I really, really, really love the undertones. I love the way it looks. It's a beautiful lipstick. I know that I already took it off, but I feel like Birkin Brown, as I was taking it off, I was musing. I think that what I like so much about it is it's got like a red brown undertone. It's brown, but there's something ruddy about it. It's like a rusty brown. Mm, it's like a berry brown. And now for something completely different. This is NARS Catherine. Historically, I have really loved coral lipstick, bright milky coral as a lipstick color, and I used to have a lot of them. I think that just for me, as my style has evolved, my makeup style, my clothing style, my general aesthetic, they've just fit in less well. And I've also found myself moving away from coral and pink on the cheeks and maybe even a little bit on the eyes depending so it does make sense to me but i wanted to keep one ever so often i do want to wear this kind of color so i kept the one that was always my favorite which is nars catherine it's the audacious lip formula it's such a beautiful formula i love the undertones of nars lip products really all nars products the way that they balance colors is just spot on to me so sophisticated and yet surprising and often somewhat editorial i feel like this lipstick encompasses all of that this is another one that is really making me want to wear it more often the experience of putting it on right now is making me want to put it at the front of my vanity it was like when i first started applying it i was like whoa that's coral whoa that's milky whoa that's fluorescent and now that i've had it on for just a couple of minutes i feel like it looks normal and natural on me. It's a good reminder. Let's do my other NARS bullet lipstick. This is NARS Shiop. This is probably the lipstick that's the most unique in my collection of bullet lipsticks, and it's also one of my favorites. Mmm, this is the original NARS lipstick formula, and it's still such a good formula. It endures, and the colors really endure. I love Shiop. I just love it. What, what else can I say? It's a really, really milky, bright, cool tone fuchsia. I want to put more on. This is one that I really don't want to blot down. I like having it at full opacity. I do still smudge the edges out for that soft, diffused lip line, but in the middle, I like to layer it on. 
This lipstick is the reason I didn't feel compelled to buy any of those Lisa Eldridge, Rainbow Spill, all of those lipsticks that she came out with. Hers are a slight bit more warm toned than Shiop. Shiop, I feel like, is the coolest of the bunch if you were to put them all together. But I only need one lipstick like this, and this takes care of that entire idea for me. All right, second to last, we have Tom Ford Wild Ginger. The texture is luxurious, the smell is beautiful, the color is spot on. I just love this lipstick. It's like my perfect fiery red. The last handful that I've put on have really left behind some pigment. My lips are starting to get dyed that kind of fuchsia color, but this should cover it up. This is my uh, my darkest red lipstick, I think. It's uh, Charlotte Tilbury's Legendary Queen. All right, there is Legendary Queen. You guys told me in the comments Charlotte Tilbury was referencing something about the royal family when she named this lipstick and that it doesn't really have to do with drag queens, but I still think of drag queens every time I read the name of this lipstick, Legendary Queen, and that's good enough for me. It always gives me a drag queen related thrill to see it or to wear it. I like how rusty and red, or rusty and like sort of warm in a deep, almost orange tinged way. I like how rusty this lipstick is while still being a red and still having that depth, but it's almost like a watery depth. It, it is deep and rusty, but without necessarily going vampy on me. It still looks like an evening look rather than a vampy look. I think of this as like my blood red. It's like the blood red on me. If it were any more neutral, it would look kind of more cool toned and more middling. Because it has that warmth, it looks like that neutral blood red for me. And that is it. That was me swatching all 16 of my bullet style lipsticks and talking about them. I hope that this was somewhat entertaining for you guys. I hope that morale isn't too low over there where you are. I hope that you're finding healthy ways to self-soothe as I am trying to do this was one of them and actually this did make me feel better. I, I feel better at the end of this video than I did at the beginning and I'm going to go ahead and edit it and get it up so that you guys can watch it tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this one and I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective versions of yourselves as you do your work in the world. 